What's going on, guys? We're back here with a WandaVision Season 1 review. Season 1, Episode 1 and 2 dropping this past Friday on Disney+. Plus. It's been a long wait for Marvel fans. The first real piece of Marvel content we've gotten since Spider-Man Far From Home a year and a half ago, way back when in the dark ages of July of 2019. It's been that long since we've gotten anything Marvel-related. Um, this being a show, WandaVision dropping this past Friday, as I said, and it's got a lot of people buzzing, a lot of people talking about what these Easter egg means, where the show is going, what's it all about. Not a ton was explained, but there is a lot of excitement surrounding the show, and for good reason, which we'll get into. Um, but obviously, before we go any further, gotta bring back the man himself, Chris Mueller, the doc. We broke down every Marvel movie um, in 2020. That was a lot of fun. We broke down The Mandalorian Season 2, and now we're back here to talk about WandaVision. I've been looking forward to this for a while, my man. Oh yeah, me too. I'm I'm so happy there's something to talk about again. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't have to wait long either because Mandalorian wrapped up about a month ago, three, four weeks ago. It was right before Christmas. Now we get this every week for the next two months, I assume. And then if I'm not mistaken, we have this. We have Falcon Winter Soldier in March, Loki in May. I think the What If show, not confirmed. I think it comes out in the summer, so... If so, we're going to have a whole shit ton of content for 2021. Just from show, you know, alone. That's not even counting Black Widow and The Eternals, which I think is currently slated for November. So there's a lot to look forward to. Um, but like I said, we broke down every single installment in the MCU last year. One of those movies being the Black Panther movie, which we discussed in detail with Phil, our other guest here today. That was one of my favorite episodes we did. Phil, welcome back, my man. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk WandaVision with us today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Of course. So we talked Black Panther with you last time. Today we're talking WandaVision. Now, of course, this is something completely different. I'll start with you, Phil. Uh, what were your expectations going into this show? Because before recently, before I saw the trailers personally, I was not overly anticipating the show aside from the fact that it was just anything Marvel you know is going to be good. I personally don't care that much about Vision where I didn't have high hopes for the show. Um, and I like Scarlet Witch. She obviously is one of the more, I would say, underrated uh, characters in the MCU as far as, you know, uh, the, the movies go. Um, but I wasn't sure how this movie was going to, or this show was going to be until I saw the trailers and I got excited for it. What were your expectations going into these first two episodes? Uh, I mean, I didn't have like high expectations, but you know, with everything going on and just being inside and not being able to do much, of course, everything kind of changed. So, yeah. Uh, being able to watch both episodes this morning because there's not much going on just <laughs> absolutely changed everything around it. <laughs> what, is there anything else you're watching right now? Obviously, we're all wrestling fans. We watch and cover that. Is there anything else you're watching at the moment or no? Uh, no, I mean, I was keeping up with Mandalorian okay. until it finished. Yep. Um, uh, trying to think of anything else that I was watching. Um, yeah, everything is kind of like finished. It's like <laughs> yeah. every, everything that was going is like just wrapped up as season. Did you watch The Boys by any chance or no? I didn't. No, okay. I didn't either. But did you, Chris, or did you say you were going to get around to it at some point? Uh, I still haven't gotten around to it. I've, I've tried. Mm -hmm. And like I'm one of those people that if I'm going to get into a show – the first episode really has to pull me in. And honestly, with that show, it didn't. Mm -hmm. And so it's been hard for me to go back and revisit it. I will at some point when I run out of everything to watch <laughs> and rewatch and whatever. But yeah, um, yeah it, it just like the whole this is what superheroes would really be like take is something I'm, I'm kind of over at this point. Mm hmm. Well, I, I, so, I know there was one show that you had recommended to me, and I thought it was The Boys. It wasn't. I forgot it was Cobra Kai that you, you suggested to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, quick, I know this obviously isn't WandaVision related, but what were your thoughts on that? Oh, I, I mean, Jesus. Cobra Kai is amazing. It's so much <laughs> better than it should be. Like, the original movies are great, but they're they're really nothing like special when you compare them to other movies of the 80s they're yeah. just you know they're they were fun movies that a lot of us enjoyed but this show has elevated those movies in my opinion and yeah cobra kai is incredible I, i'm a big fan of it and i'm i really like what they did in season three especially with all the people they brought back from the previous movies did that drop on new year's day or something because that's when i saw people talking about it 
Yeah, and I ended up not going to sleep that night. And so when 3 a.m. rolled around and it dropped on Netflix, I was like, well, might as well start this. And I ended up just finishing the whole season in one shot. That's amazing. Uh, well, obviously, this is a little different. They, they're they going to be spacing up the WandaVision episodes week by week for the next, I think, two months. I think, as far as I know, they're doing nine episodes. We got the first two at the same time. Um, so I'll ask you the same thing, Chris, that I asked Phil. What were your expectations coming into the show even before the commercials that we got recently, are you a big Vision fan, big Scarlet Witch fan? What were you expecting from the show before we saw what we did on Friday? I mean, I like both actors. Uh, some of the stuff they did in the movies with the two characters, I felt like was a little rushed as far as they went from like flirting to all of a sudden they're like in run and on the love. <laughs> but, yeah. But beyond that, like I give those movies leeway and that things have to happen off screen in between each movie. So stuff happens, stuff gets skipped. Not that important. Uh, As far as expectations go, I didn't know a hundred percent exactly what the show was going to be. Mm -hmm. So I was just super curious in general because those first few trailers were so, out there with the whole aesthetic of like fifties and sixties sitcoms and stuff that I, I immediately became interested in, in exactly like how it was going to do that. And so far I'm very pleased with what they've done in regards to paying homage to those shows. Did you think it was a smart idea to drop two episodes at one, uh, at once on Friday? Yeah. Especially since they're only a half hour long. Yeah. Wasn't The Mandalorian around 25, 30 minutes, too? I guess the, some of them were closer to 40, but weren't, wasn't The Mandalorian around the same length, too, for Disney Plus? Yeah, they fluctuated, but I think 35 to 40 was their average for season two. I think there was only one that was, like, 30 minutes long. And that was, like, the Boba Fett return, too, which was the best part. <laughs> like, the, one of the best episodes was, like, the quickest one, which was funny. What, what I thought yeah. was weird about this was that the season premiere, the series premiere of this show, WandaVision was, I think, 30 minutes. Um, I think that's what it says on Disney Plus is 30 minutes. It was over, actually, within, like, 23. It ended a little quickly, and then I'm like, wait, why did it end so quickly? And then there were, like, seven minutes worth of credits, which that's as, almost as long as you get in the credits and, like, when you go see a movie. So I thought that was weird. Um, the second episode was actually a little bit longer. It was around 35, but without the credits, it was, like, 28 minutes. Um, so I think the length is absolutely perfect. Were you a fan, Phil, of the length? Or not only the length, I guess, but the fact they dropped two episodes of, uh, at once uh, when the show debuted on Friday? Yeah, I think it was a good idea to drop two episodes, especially because what we got in the first episode uh, didn't give us a whole bunch. So it was good that we got you know two episodes to kind of get a feel for this new, uh, I guess, universe to call it. Yeah. Universe, multiverse, whatever they're going with here. No, but I totally agree, because like I told you guys before we went live here, I I thought both episodes had a very similar feel. And the second episode gave us a little bit more, not detail, but gave us more of an idea of what we can expect from the remainder of the season, where they might be going with this. Um, If it was just the first episode, for me personally, I mean, obviously I'm going to watch it all anyway, I thought the second episode got me more excited for what they might be doing with the show as opposed to the first, even though both were enjoyable for different reasons. Um, Chris, I know you were praising this uh, on Twitter, both the, you know just the fact that it dropped and your thoughts on it, which we'll get into. Was it the first episode that hooked you, or was it the second episode, or was it both? It was both, but I think, and I, I know I said this on Twitter already, but I think part of the reason I was so into it from the beginning was because... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a little older than you guys and I grew up with reruns of all those old sitcoms Mm -hmm. on Nick at night. So like Dick Van Dyke, Lucy, Mary Tyler Moore, all that stuff. I dream of Jeannie Bewitched. Like I, I watch all those Mm -hmm. and I loved them. And so I'm kind of curious as to like, if you guys were into those shows and if not, did the aesthetic even appeal to you at all? That's a good question. For me personally, not that I wasn't into them, but I wasn't really, I didn't grow up on them the same way that you did. So I don't have that same like attachment to it. Although I did watch some of those same shows on Nick at night, like you said, because they were still airing them in like 
the early two thousands and stuff like that. Um, like the nanny, would you would you put like the nanny in that category too? No, not really, because the nanny was made in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I I know what you're saying I, I, now. Like, like Fran Drescher yeah. is like you know she was big when I was a little kid, but um, no, I'm talking more like the black and white stuff. Okay. In, in particular, yeah. like, and even Bewitched when it became color, which I, I want to talk about that in a little while, because that kind of connects to this in a little bit. But uh, what about you, Phil? Did you ever watch any of those old shows? Yeah, I did get into like Mary Tyler Moore, like Dick Van Dyke, but I watched the, uh, a lot of I Love Lucy when I was a kid. Um, I watched some Bewitched, but um, not a whole lot. So um, I, I don't know a Small Wonder Counts. I watched a lot of that. Yeah, that's that's up there. Um, so t- so you watched Lucy. Did the girl in the toaster commercial, did it not look like they were just trying to make her look like Lucille Ball? Yes. Um, the part where – there's a part – well, the, uh, of course, the beginning of um, the episode two made me think of I Love Lucy immediately. Um with the two twin beds, because <laughs> that's yeah. right out of I Love Lucy. They were in the same room, and they slept in twin beds. Oh, yeah. Well, that was originally, like, TV back when they had, like, even stricter standards. Couples were not allowed to be shown in bed together on television. Mm-hmm. I'm not 100% sure if this is actually true or if this is a joke I heard, but I think the first couple that was actually shown sharing a bed on television were the Flintstones. Wow. Really? Interesting. I don't know if that's actually like a fun fact or if, if I'm remembering it wrong, but Dick Van Dyke, which was the basis for that whole first episode, that whole first episode of WandaVision is a Dick Van Dyke parody. Was he involved with the episode behind the scenes? Dick Van Dyke? I think he, I think he, they actually brought him in to like use his influence on the show. I thought that's what I heard. Well, I mean the, if they did, it was probably to make sure that they got some of his, some of the set stuff right because that set was like perfect. Mm-hmm. Like it looked like the living room, the kitchen, the bedroom, and they slept. Him and Mary Tyler Moore were married on the show, and they had separate twin beds. I remember it very clearly. Mm-hmm. And even in the beginning, when they're like walking through the door for the first time, there's a little joke how in the opening credits of Dick Van Dyke, he always tripped over an ottoman in the living room. Oh but, yeah. And vision did that and, too, where he walked through it or whatever. Yeah. yeah. He walks, he walks through. I love that they did that because in the later <laughs> seasons of Dick Van Dyke, they changed the credits and show him sidestepping around the ottoman. Like, ha I didn't <laughs> trip this time. That's so funny. I just little details like that. I loved. And then also the fact that, they kind of immediately almost establish like an, a Lucy and Ethel connection with Catherine Hahn's character, the mm-hmm. nosy neighbor like that, that just made me smile right away. And then I think the thing that impressed me the most though, about that first episode was how well Elizabeth Olsen nailed what they call the mid Atlantic accent, which is what almost every actress was forced to use back in those days. Mm-hmm. So she just she had that down perfectly. So then when she switched out of it, when the guy starts choking at the table and she's like, vision, help him. Yeah. Like it was so obvious that she switched back to her normal voice because she had that mid-Atlantic accent down so well. Better than she had her Eastern European accent down, too. That's for sure. <laughs> Y'all God, that accent yeah. was terrible. Holy shit. That thing sucked. But um, no, that's a great point. I, yeah, I noticed that, too. That that whole thing, it, it, it was really all. So would would you say with that episode the first one? I, this is I'm I'm all over the place here, but was that first episode more fifties, and then the second episode is more sixties, or what was your guys' mm-hmm. analysis? Yeah, absolutely. Dick Van Dyke was, I think it was a late fifties, early sixties show, and then Bewitched, which was very clearly the inspiration for the second one. Mm-hmm. They they like a lot of sitcoms get referenced in both, but Dick Van Dyke was the first one, and then the second one, like that is basically samantha's living room that they're in like Mm -hmm. the stairs are in the exact same spot the whole setup was perfect and paul bettany had had dick van dyke's physical comedy down like just that tall lanky kind of look is the same thing that dick van dyke had going back in the day so 
like he looked like he was having a blast like just getting to play this goofy ass husband character huh. instead of the ultra serious android like it looked like he was having fun yeah, yeah, this was probably the most enjoyable that you know he's been as a character since. I, I I loved him as Jarvis, the Vision character. Just does absolutely nothing for me personally. But I thought him playing himself on the show, I thought that was great. Yeah, it was fun. Do you think he's probably ecstatic with the fact that he can do a live action role, but he doesn't have to put on the hours and hours worth of makeup? Oh, I'm sure that was very appealing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's probably getting paid more to do that than he was when he was Jarvis, but he's probably getting paid the same amount that he was when he was Vision, just without all the makeup. So I, it's a, it's a win win essentially. Um, but th- there really weren't many storyline advancements in that first episode. It really was a parody of the Dick Van Dyke Show and stuff like that. Like you said, for almost the better part, almost the entirety of that first episode, until the guy choked, and then she said, "Vision, go help him." He does. That's when things get weird. And, and that was pretty much at the end, of the, the very end of the episode. Uh, so, Phil, what do you think when when you're watching this? Are you thinking? Obviously, you're enjoying it just for like the nostalgia portion of it and stuff like that. But like other than that, w- at, when you're watching this, are you thinking, okay, they got to pick up the pace here, or do you know that it's going to be headed somewhere eventually? You just don't know when. Um, no, I'm I'm giving them a chance to build this universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I definitely think that that was the point of the first two episodes is to kind of build this world and get us to meet like all of the neighbors and everything that are in this world with them. Um, and I think that's a big part of, um, why we needed the second episode because like the first episode you get like their house and their in-house drama. And then in the second episode, you meet like a lot of the other people that are in that neighborhood. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And they also do a good job too. I think of, uh, kind of planting the seeds for what's to come in the second episode where, the, the whole point of the episode of that first one is that they want to celebrate their anniversary, but they don't know when their anniversary is, and they don't even know why they're there, but they're not doing it overtly to the point where, like, I, it, it's 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 hard to explain, but, like, the subtleties there are really well done, and uh, they kind of build more with that with the second episode, and I'm sure it's going to be even more prevalent with the third. Um, but what about you, Chris? Watching that first episode, obviously you're enjoying it for what it is, um, both... Um, you know, Wanda and Vision are, are just knocking it out of the park with their characters. But what do you think, when, when you're watching this, where do you think this is going while you're watching that first episode? I mean, I was sort of just along for the ride, but I was also obviously trying to spot stuff. And I've already watched both episodes twice, mm-hmm. so I did pick up some stuff on that second viewing. Um, But... I was more just kind of enjoying it for for the parody aspect at first. Just because, like, Dick Van Dyke specifically was very much a show that I enjoyed as a kid. So just watching that, like, down to the storyline of the episode, like, do you know how many sitcoms have done a storyline about, oh, my God, my boss is coming for dinner and I need to impress him? And, like, just them using that as the background storyline it just it was such a perfect little reference to all those shows because it's like they make it seem like he doesn't even know his boss like we've met eric once in person and probably know him better than vision knows his boss whose door (laughs) is literally next to his desk yeah i mean so it's it's just kind of funny to see that stuff but um i think Honestly, the the person who stuck out to me the most was Catherine Hahn, the neighbor, Agnes. Mm-hmm. Like she is just so funny whenever she's in anything. Like she, her character in Parks and Recreation was amazing, and she's so good at that fake smile and that that fakeness that all those old sitcoms had. Like they always portrayed this idealized picture of life, and she fits so well in that because she has that look of, you know, the fifties sitcom wife, but she has the sarcastic wit of a current comic. So I I felt like adding her to the show was probably the stroke of genius that like is making the show as good as it is. Cause she's sort of almost like guiding Wanda through these events. Yeah. 
Yeah. She mentioned at one um, point. Whether it's intentional or not. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, she even said at one point, I forgot who she was referencing. I think it was in the second episode. She was like, oh, this person is the key to this. Like, very obviously, but like they were saying it within the context of what that episode was about. But it seemed like maybe I was just reading too much into it, but it seemed like you might be leading to something at some point with whatever. Because she also, she also expressed confusion, didn't she? Where she was like, I have no idea. Like, why are you here? Um, or like, who is that on the radio? Oh no, that wasn't her. That was the other, that was the blonde haired woman. Uh, I get some of the yeah. characters mixed up, but yeah, no, she, as far as her character is concerned, she is perfectly positioned in the show. I thought she was a fantastic fit for the show. Um, there was speculation I know going in. I don't know too much about the vision Wanda universe. Um, I, I think there was some speculation that she could be the Agatha Harkness character. Um, does that ring a bell, Chris? Well, I think they're, I'm not sure about the name, but I think I heard that, she, like, the character she's playing could be another, like, magic-using witch-type character. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't, I, I haven't heard the name before I had other, I had heard other people talk about it. Uh, what about you, Phil? What what role do you think that she'll play in the show, aside from just being the, uh, you know, the person that kind of guides Wanda along? Um, well, it's clear, like, she is trying to... It's got to be more than her being nosy because there was certain parts like in the first episode where she just kept coming back. It was like, yeah, there's something else to this. Like she just keeps popping up on the scene and it can't be just that, you know, on the surface, of course, it's the nosy neighbor trope. But in this show, it looks like it's like, okay, she is clearly like either trying to figure out what's going on here like we are or she's trying to or she knows more than she's putting on yeah yeah no so i have i have a theory i want to i i have like i've already developed a full theory for this show okay i want to throw that out there before we go any further because i feel like we're gonna end up talking about parts of this as we go along yeah so the first episode we see the toaster commercial and it's a stark industries toaster yeah, I was going to say second, the second one had Hydra on it, didn't it? It was a uh, Strucker. Strucker. Strucker brand watch. Now, okay. in Age of Ultron, those were the two people who essentially influenced everything about Wanda's motivation. Stark, because it was a Stark missile that almost killed them, and oh, right. it was Stark weapons that killed the parents, and Strucker, because he is the one who experimented on her and her brother with the uh, Infinity Stone. Mm -hmm. so I think those are more than just Easter eggs I think one thing that could come into play at some point is if you remember Stark at the beginning of Civil War was demonstrating a technology that like created a world around him virtually and allowed him to you know see his parents again okay Oh, oh I, right. I, I, the barf thing you're talking about that they use in Far From Home? Yes. Yeah. So I'm what I'm thinking is possibly she was given that technology in hopes that it would help her cope with losing vision. But because she has such unique and strong magic, she manifests what she is seeing in this technology into reality and what i think is happening is she essentially has this small town or neighborhood or whatever trapped in her own vision so we see the blonde woman that that starts like getting uh accusatory of her in the yes. second episode uh -huh. and, she, and she goes you know i'm not here to hurt anybody and the woman goes, I don't believe you. And it's like for a split second, both of them drop their characters. And then all of a sudden the radio starts going and you hear this guy going, Wanda, who's doing this to you? Mm -hmm. So I think Strucker may be involved in some way because he's not dead. Oh, he was never killed, was he, in Age of Ultron? No, he just arrested and thrown in a cell somewhere. So what I'm ho hoping ends up being the case is he sent her the glasses as some kind of weird experiment. Mm -hmm. And she ended up not only manifesting vision back to life because she's that powerful, but now she's pregnant at the end of the second episode. So we're going to see her kids come into play at some point. Cause in the comics, 
she essentially brought two kids into existence who are both very powerful and very dangerous. Are they mutants or no? Well, in the comics, she's a mutant too. Oh, right, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but so yeah, that's my theory and that I also feel like the beekeeper that she saw come out of the sewer is supposed to actually be a guy in a hazmat suit. That's what I figured, try- yeah. Who's That's- trying to get into this bubble that she's created. And as soon as she sees him, she's like, no. And she just rewinds time and stops it from ever happening. So, like, yeah. I think that she's controlling all this whether she wants to or not. I don't know if somebody's influencing that, but we know S.W.O.R.D. is watching over her in some way, which is, like, the space equivalent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, I know, um, Jimmy Woo, is that his character or is that the actor's name? Um, Randall Park is the actor. Jimmy Woo is the character. Okay, okay. Yeah, because you hear his voice at the end of the first, or I'm sorry, the second episode, um, saying, Wanda, what are you doing or whatever, and I think... From from the from that, the trailers, sure. you can depict he's from he's in sword too, um, but yeah, I thought that was really interesting. First of all, it's a cool theory. Second of all, I, it was interesting. I like the way that they, they did this because I don't know where it's gonna go because, she, like you said, she rewound it. So your um, my immediate assumption is that she's trapped in there against her will for whatever reason. Someone's playing mind games with her. But then she knows that she must be aware that she's in this bubble, like you said, because she rewound it and pretended like she never saw it. So I I don't know if that's supposed to be like a villainous thing or like, I don't know. It was very interesting how they kind of went about this. And obviously, well, it'll all make more sense as we go along here. Um, But no, yeah, I didn't even really think of Strucker. I completely forgot about the fact that he was still alive. So that's actually a really likely theory. Um, Any thoughts on that? Any any thoughts on that, Phil? Uh, To me... I, I, I agree with most of the theory, but I do think she's in full control. I think she knows exactly what's going on, and I think this is all like a coping mechanism, and she just doesn't want to let go of it. This all feels very much like House of M, if you read the uh, big Marvel crossover where um, she took all of the Marvel Universe and put them in this pocket universe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course the the big thing that happened after that was, you know, no more mutants. She said at the end and it, she ended up getting rid of most of the mutants in the universe. Um, and I immediately thought about that when the beekeeper came out of the sewer and she said, no, it immediately reminded me of house of them. Mm-hmm. So do you think it could maybe end up with a reversal of that? And she's the one who brings mutants into this world somehow. Yes. But I think that, like, I've seen a lot of people theorize that, like, um, screwing with time and screwing with, like, um, the the gems could be the catalyst for that as well. Because, like, we don't know, like, a lot of what happened after the decimation. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it's interesting you say that. I saw people theorize, like you just said, Phil, about the No More Mutants thing. Um, someone had made the point, and maybe this was a popular theory. I just I saw a couple people brought this up. Instead of saying no more mutants, she would say no, comma more mutants. I don't know if that's one way of getting around it, and that's how they introduce mutants to the uh, to the MCU. Uh, I, 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 this has got to, the end game here has got to be getting the mutants into the MCU because we already know. And I was gonna say Fantastic Four. That's not mutant related. We're talking about X Men here. They haven't they haven't mentioned anything about the X Men. They recently had the Disney, you know, conference, whatever, like a month ago, they mentioned Fantastic Four. You would think if they were going to mention Fantastic Four, there would be some talk about X-Men. There has been literally zero word on that. So do you think they're keeping it so quiet because they want the big reveal at the end of this, at the end of this show to introduce them at some point? Or do you think, Phil, I'll start with you. Do you think they just seriously don't have any plans for them in the immediate future? I don't, I don't think there's plans in the immediate future. I think they're pushing the mutant stuff further down. Like, I think when they introduce the mutants in a big way, it's going to be in a movie. I can't see them doing doing something as big as bringing the mutants to MCU and doing it on Disney+. Plus. Um, mm-hmm. There might be hints of it here, but I can't see us getting to the end of the series and going, okay, they're mutants. Like, yeah. like I think the closest we're going to get to mutants is, of course, her her offsprings if we're going to start it off there 
Um, but speaking of offspring, I think this watching this and everything else I've seen them do very much tells me they're doing a Young Avengers movie. There's no way they're not doing Young Avengers. No, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've already planted the seeds for stature, Ant Man's daughter. Mm-hmm. Aren't Hawk they doing the Ironheart? The Ironheart with show. Too? Yeah. Yeah, they announced Ironheart, which yeah. um, I'm 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 excited for that. I mean, I think there's super great potential there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we still don't know who that kid. Well, we know the kid from Iron Man three was in Thank at you. the end of Infinity yeah. Wars. Um, they've the first thing I thought when I saw the the Chris Evans news that he immediately debunked. <laughs> <laughs> was yeah, I was going to ask you guys about that too. Yeah, the first thing I thought was, "There's no way if if he's coming, I can totally see him mentoring Patriot, um, and possibly bringing that team together." Yeah. Well, do you think? I don't it, know. I mean, would it be a major role that he's brought back want, for? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. They gave him such a good ending that, like, anything beyond a funny cameo at this point would would ruin that for me. Like, it, no. they, they ended his character's arc so perfectly that I just think it's it's good as it is. That's just well, me, though. I, I think taking him off of the... Taking him off the radar for a while and having him come back and do something like bring the Young Avengers together and mentor them for a little bit and then going back off the radar, I think that works. He doesn't need to be... As long as he's what not you, putting a suit on and, and throwing a shield again, like I don't think it takes away from his well, happy would ending. Old, would he be old Cap when he did that? Yes. Oh, then I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I'm, I I'm want totally to go not back for to him. young. I just don't want them to go back to young Captain America again. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. And that's that's what I mean. I think him being old and you know, like discovering Patriot, or even like like if we get something like Steve goes to visit who we find out is um, Patriot's grandfather, and that's how we introduce him. That makes a lot of sense. So are you guys telling me that they're taking a page at a WWE's playbook and bringing back all the old part-timers for the MCU going forward? <laughs> MCU Legends Night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to do a Legends Night, and, the, and it's going to bomb at the box office. Um, no, yeah. It would, I, just be all the, it would just be all the characters nobody cares about, like <laughs> the last Legends Night. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, I'm glad you brought that up, Phil, because I was going to ask you guys about that as well. The whole Chris Evans thing, because the, uh, the the timing was interesting coming off, you know, right before so, the debut of the show. Did you hear about Deadpool three though? I did. I heard about that too. What about you, Phil? I did. I haven't read much about it. So apparently, Ryan Reynolds signed like a massive deal with Marvel, and they they've confirmed Deadpool three is going to be in the MCU. Well, I mean, I figured if they were going to do a Deadpool movie or if they were going to take another movie from Fox, it was going to be Deadpool. It's the yeah. biggest franchise they had. It's the it's the success story of the of the Fox Muse universe. Definitely. There's, if there was anything to save from that ship, it was Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But I think Deadpool could be just because he has like so much leeway being a fourth wall breaking character that they could use that movie as a way to introduce the mutants or at least expand upon them after their initial introduction in a different movie. Right. Yeah. yeah I can see but that. either way, I'm just happy that Reynolds, like one of his sticking points to doing it was like, it has to still be rated R. Oh, definitely. Marvel's like fine. Yeah whatever <laughs> daredevil was pretty violent so i guess we can do this too yeah no it has yeah. to be in order to maintain the the image of deadpool and just just the mat i mean not saying the movies were just good for the swears and like the crude content and whatever but it's part of the appeal of the movie so if they didn't have that it just wouldn't be the same yeah i mean i didn't like I, when they did that PG-13 re-release of Daredevil with Fred Savage and the Princess Bride stuff, um, with, I thought it worked. Was Deadpool or was, you said Daredevil? Sorry, Deadpool. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm making sure. Okay, okay, yeah. For, for Deadpool too, when they like recreated the opening scene of Princess Bride with a <laughs> yeah. grown-up Savage tied to his bed, mm-hmm. uh, I, I felt like the movie still worked PG-13, 
but it, it wasn't as funny as the R-rated version. So I'm, I'm glad that they're going to stick to that because Deadpool, first and foremost, needs to be funny. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it just it absolutely needs to be rated R, so I'm glad that it will be. I um, you know that's exciting news. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, before yeah. I forget, Chris, you mentioned earlier the color thing. What was your analysis of that from episode two? Well, switching to color in that episode did seem very appropriate because Bewitched literally did go from black and white for the first few seasons to being color for the later seasons. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. I was... I was... There was a joke that I knew they wouldn't make because it would just be so random, but, like, halfway through Bewitched, uh, Dick York got... I think he got sick Mm -hmm. and left production, and he was playing uh, the main character... The main character's husband, rather. Mm -hmm. So he was replaced by another actor named Dick Sargent. I so bad wanted for just one scene Paul Bettany to be replaced by another actor... (laughs) <laughs> and for her to make a joke about it and then, oh, like, geez. just change him back to Paul Bettany and be like, that's better. Like, I just wanted it for a second and it didn't happen, but I understand why. That would have been such a, a niche random joke for, like, five people. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, the switching to color at the end and the reveal of, of her being pregnant, I thought, was interesting. And, you know, there was a scene earlier in that episode where where she's in the little... Uh, outfit for the magic show and I swear to god they intentionally show her from the side and they show her belly being slightly bigger than it was in the scene before Oh, really? and I thought I was, I thought I was just going crazy mm-hmm. and then at the end she has a slightly bigger belly and she, all of a sudden she looks like she's you know four months pregnant or something and yeah. I'm like maybe I'm not going crazy it's like they might have slowly expanded it a few times throughout the episode before that big reveal. But, um, we didn't even talk about the fact that the mom from that seventies show was in. This. Oh, of course. <laughs> like, yeah, that was my first, that was the biggest highlight for me in that first so episode. Good in that, in that first episode. <laughs> is it, yeah. is it just me or is she literally not aged the day? And maybe it was the black and white, but she does not look, she looks a little bit older, but that show was like 20 years ago. And she looks almost the exact same way that she did 20, uh, 20 years ago in that 70s show. Yeah, but she's she's a great like sitcom actress. She's been in a bunch of them. Like my the first thing I ever saw her in was Seinfeld. She was Jerry's agent in a few episodes. Oh really? I didn't know that. Interesting. She, she was super funny, and just to see her pop up, that just made me smile because she's such a funny actress. And like that seventies show wouldn't have worked without her and Red. Yeah, that's the like. Yeah. They really were my favorite characters anyway. Yeah, it was disappointing. Yeah. We didn't see her in the second episode, did we? The boss and, and his wife, you know, the woman from that 70s show, they didn't return in the second episode of WandaVision? No. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, but oh, no, they were shown in the, in the crowd at the talent show. The wife was anyway. Oh. I don't know about the husband, but they did show her, like, smiling and clapping. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. What uh, were we going to say, yeah. Phil? I, no, but I, I was just going to say the. Well, I think about the color change thing. I immediately thought of um, um, Pleasantville when she came outside and the drone was sitting outside and it was in color and nothing else was. Oh yeah, the little helicopter with the sword logo, right? Yeah. So oh, I immediately right. okay, thought of yeah. Pleasant Pleasantville when I was sitting thinking, watching it at first, mm-hmm. um, and just I mean, before like I jump into color change, like. When I was sitting watching it all in black and white and they were doing all of the physical humor, like mm-hmm. you could just see how well um, Elizabeth Olsen did with all of like the facial expressions and just all of the nonverbal stuff. Like she just killed that in the first episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like the color change, like when it first happened, I was sitting there like, OK, um. Uh, and then, like, we get the pregnancy reveal right before that. So I'm wondering, like, for the third episode, like, how are they going to, like, explain a way that she's just, like, pregnant? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like very visibly pregnant. Yeah. Well, um, I actually noticed something. In each episode, somebody made a comment about her not having children. 
Yeah, yes. they did mention that at the dinner table in the first episode. I remember that. Did they say something in the second episode too? I want to say some. It, it got brought up somewhere, and it was just a fleeting thing. Okay. But yeah. And then there was the whole thing, like the banner for the children, the magic shows for the elementary school. Like, oh right, yeah. There was lots of mention of children, but we didn't really see children in the episode. Yeah, and see that's that stuff like that is why I think Wanda's in full control because everything that has happened so far and all the changes that are made are strictly to fit in in the neighborhood, and everything someone says to her. She'll change it immediately to fit in. Yeah, like exactly. When, when, when they said they didn't have wedding rings, they end up with wedding rings at the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, even the whole idea of them not having an anniversary, she only came up with that to think that it was an anniversary based off what the neighbor said. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. That's really yeah. cool. So many little details in this show were done really well. Like, you can tell they meticulously planned this to where like every scene, every line, like so many things have meaning that we're probably not even picking up on yet. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I think, I think more things will become clear as the episodes come out, um, which is why they're worth a rewatch. Was there a picture of the Sokovian castle from Ultron on their wall somewhere? Somebody pointed that out to me on Twitter. (laughs) I did not know that. That's, I didn't notice that. Hmm. That's a hell of a find right there. I wouldn't even look at. I wouldn't even look at the pictures. That's a hell of a. The only thing I was looking for in the background was a picture of her brother. I oh was yeah, well, they I, were gonna have a picture yeah. of that actor show up somewhere. I think I think he is gonna pop up, and maybe even in a flashback. I think if there is any time to bring him back, and I'm not even saying bring him back as a full time character, I think it's only inevitable before he appears in one of these episodes. What do you guys think? I, from what I understood, I thought he was contracted for more than one movie. So I, I've always been thinking he's going to show up again. Okay. Yeah, I never heard that. But if it's true, then it might as well be for something you know relating to this or the multiverse or whatever, you know? I think when they do these contracts, sometimes they put in, like, options for multiple movies. But... Um, I'm. I would love if he shows up again, just because that character. Well, you know what? <sighs> Super speed is one of those things that like it makes so many problems just easy to solve. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of glad that there really isn't that many super speed characters in Marvel right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the problem that the Flash TV show has. It's like, he should be able to fix every problem in literally a millisecond. Like, <laughs> yeah. after a while, I got really tired of, oh, it's another speedster villain. Like, yeah. Because they're the only ones who can match Barry Allen. So after a while, it just got old and they started using non-speedster villains and then it just looked weird because it's like, well, how is anyone doing anything before Barry runs across the entire planet and punches him in the face? Like, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't know. I like that actor a lot. Um, God, I can't think of his name right now. Uh, but, uh, Aaron... What is his last name? Aaron something? Uh, yeah, it is like Aaron something. Evan um, Peters was the other Quicksilver in X Men. Um, but yeah, but this just brings up something that I absolutely loved about Quicksilver and Age of Ultron in general. Age of Ultron is one of those movies that I think gets a bad rep. Um, and there was a lot of things in Age of Ultron that people didn't like, mm-hmm. and that turned into oh, this is a bad movie. But it wasn't a bad movie, and there was a lot of things in there that worked. And Quicksilver, to me, was one of the best parts of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, he because we saw like two movies before that that had speedsters in it and their limitations would just jump all over the place. Like you had Quicksilver in the X-Men movies and he looked like he was essentially slowing down time. He was so fast. And then you have him in age of Ultron where he can do all these great things. And then he just gets stopped and beaten very easily. But Quicksilver in age of Ultron needed to stop and take breaths. I thought that was very interesting. You you could see that there was care shown to how his metabolism worked. And you did yeah. you don't see that a lot with a lot of speedsters 
in like live action. Hmm. No, they they addressed it a little bit in season one of Flash. They had a they had one of his buddies at Star Labs make some protein bars that are like a thousand protein bars in one, so he can eat that instead of having to eat you know nine thousand pounds of spaghetti to regain his carbs. <laughs> That makes sense. But but yeah, um, I, I do remember that in Ultron actually being like a good detail that they threw in that his speed has a limitation and he does get winded. Yeah. So that that is a good point. That's a good point that they could actually use that as a way to sort of write around his abilities, being able to fix everything as well. He can't do it every time he wants to and he can't do it forever, so... Yeah, it, yeah, I could see that being a, a good enough reason to bring him back then. Mm-hmm. One of the one of the things that I thought going into Age of Ultron, and I was surprised that we never got back to it, um, at the beginning of the movie when Hawkeye gets shot, right? He gets hit with that laser. Um, they put him in that machine to heal him. And I was like, okay, you've got a guy with sped up metabolism. Why not just put him in the same machine? And I thought that was one of those open plot threads that they were going to go back to, and they just never did. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's because he would have been dead by the time he got there, so, like, it only fixes, you know, uh, tissue. It doesn't necessarily heal. Mm. Right, but, I mean, you're you're putting a regular human in a machine. Um, at that point, Quicksilver, like I said, he had sped up metabolism, and he's not, like, a normal human, so... You could theoretically have written around that. Yeah. I mean, I think with that movie, they wanted at least one person to die to make Ultron appear a little more dangerous. And so they're like, well, just kill the new kid because everybody <laughs> yeah. else. Is- yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's definitely a, uh, that's a Whedon. That's a Whedon writing technique. He always goes back to that. We're going to get you to like this character and we're going to kill him. I'm still mad that he killed Wash. I still haven't gotten over that. It just was just such a just stab to do that. So it's totally a weird thing to do. <laughs> I mean, if they're because they keep to, every few years, somebody asks somebody about a Firefly reunion, and it's like, well, without Alan Tudyk, what's the point? Yeah, without Wash, it's like, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Plus, uh, what is it, Gina Torres, who is his wife, like. She has a great career. She's got a million other things going on, and I don't think she'd have time for it. Yeah, I don't think that's ever happening. I think that's one of those nerd things that we all wanted at one point that is just never going to happen. Kind of like Bring It Back Spectacular Spider-Man. It's not happening, kids. Like, just it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's time to let it go. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I could see at this point them bringing back is uh, – Charlie Cox is Daredevil. Like that's the only thing I think we might actually see as far as characters we thought were gone coming back. Just because Marvel has the rights now, and Kevin Feige has gone on record as a huge Daredevil fan, and that he wants to keep using the character. So I think that'll come back at some point. I can see Kingpin coming back too. Oh God, he'd better. <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio is the only reason that that show was as good as it was. Like Charlie Cox is fine, but Vincent D'Onofrio made that show. Yeah, I heard rumblings about the Daredevil stuff too. I never really got around to watching the show, but of all the of all the Netflix shows, is that the one that you guys would recommend me watching first? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You haven't seen any of Daredevil? I literally have not. I am so ashamed no, to say that. Whatever <laughs> you're haven't. watching right now, you should watch the first season of Daredevil. It okay. is so good. Yeah. Dude, if you're not hooked by the end of like even the first episode, but if you can get through the first three and not be hooked, I, I don't know what to say. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the Marvel Netflix show to watch. Okay. That, that yeah. was the best one. I, I would say Luke Cage is probably close second. But Daredevil is just far and beyond anything else they've done on television, in my opinion. I would say Luke Cage is actually better from a storytelling standpoint. Daredevil has better action just because it's a martial arts type deal. But Luke Cage, like, damn, they those characters st- stuck with me. Yeah. And ugh, fuck, I, my, if they could bring Mike Coulter back as Luke Cage, like, I'd be so happy because the way they ended season two. Yes. Yes. Oh, I want I want follow up so bad. <laughs> yes. 
Well, I'm looking but, at uh, it now. It, it says there's three seasons for Daredevil. Is that accurate? Let me see here. Yes. Yeah, plus you can kind of count the Defenders in that. Oh, which right, was the yeah, we discussed up, that. I the team-up show that. with Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, him, and Iron Fist. Uh-huh. You can skip Iron Fist. Jessica Jones is okay. <laughs> season I heard the one second Jessica... season of Iron Fist was good. I didn't get around it to watch it. It did get better. I, I think Jessica Jones, the first season, was good. The second season was in the middle for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. If you watch any of either any of them, I say Daredevil's the one to watch. Um, as Luke Cage close second to me. I thought Punisher was also pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Well, I sort I... of put Punisher. It's, even though even though John Barenthal was in season two of Daredevil as that character, I almost consider Punisher kind of off on its own thing. Yeah. Like no, it's it's there's no superpowers at all. Very little reference to any of the other shows, but. Yeah, if they could bring back like all those characters, I'd be so happy. But if I could only have one, it, it would have to be the Daredevil show, just because Kingpin, Vincent D'Onofrio as that character. Like, I want to see that version of the character square off with Spider-Man. Yes. Do you think he yes. could in the um, Spider-Man three with all, with all the villains coming back and all the people they announced they're coming back? All the old Spider-Mans, the Mary Janes, Doc Ock, blah blah blah. Do you think there's a chance they bring him in? Because I know Kingpin was obvious. I know a different version of him, but he was a part of the uh, um, into the Spider Verse movie as well as the main villain. Yeah, I mean it would be it would be awesome if he did, but Spider-Man three almost sounds so overstuffed that I'd rather see him brought back as like the main villain of, of something that doesn't have a million other gotcha. characters yeah. like Spider-Man three. If all those rumors end up being true, that movie is going to be insane. Oh, it's going to be wild. Yeah. I'm so excited for it. I think that comes out next year, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's currently slated to come out in 2022. I think. Not I think so. Who knows anymore? Yeah. Who even <laughs> fucking knows? I don't even know if black widow's coming out on time. They might delay that again. All we do know for you know, a fact is that this show is coming out every single Friday for the remainder of the uh, the winter, which is nice. And then, like I said, Falcon and Winter Soldier. We got Loki. What Ifs coming out. Maybe another show at the end of the year. Um, obviously, The Book of Boba Fett, which is Star Wars related, but for us three, it's uh, it's, it's worth looking forward to. So, um, yeah. No, I thought this were, you know, just to kind of wrap it up here, I thought the first two episodes were, uh, were, were good. I You know, the first episode, to be honest, did not hook me. Um, I, I thought it was solid, but I was just, I don't know, I was waiting for something, and maybe it is the fact, I enjoyed all the aspects of it that you guys mentioned, um, like you mentioned, Chris, all like the old, uh, you know, 50 shows, Dick Van Dyke stuff, I was just, I, I wasn't really sure what they were going for until that second episode, so, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic, and I'm looking forward to it, I enjoyed it, uh, and I'm looking so, forward to episode three. One thing we have to mention, mm-hmm. which would be considered a mild spoiler, uh, the character of Geraldine that was int- that was introduced in episode two is not Geraldine. No, it is. Uh, it's I was sitting there with a big smile on my face because I was like, "It's Monica Rambo, and they're gonna do great things with her." Shoot this character to the moon, please, Marvel! <laughs> like, please, like, I am a big fan of Monica Rambo, so I was so excited to see her. <laughs> but how good did she do? Like, the mannerisms and the way she spoke reminded me of the performance of the little girl in Captain Marvel. Like I didn't, act- I didn't notice that. The actress, like, just the way she seemed kind of excited and happy about everything, like, I felt like she actually captured the essence of what that little girl was doing in Captain Marvel, like, perfectly. I, I think it's a credit to that actress's performance. Uh, mm-hmm. Tiana Paris, that's her name. So yeah, I just felt like it was it was very clear to me based on her personality that that's who she was supposed to be. And then as soon as I looked up, like, yep, that's who it is. Yeah, well, I figured I thought they already announced that. I, I could have sworn because I know she, she was, did, in the... but I, I didn't know what she looked like. Oh okay. So when she first showed up, I was just like, oh, I bet that's supposed to be Monica because she just seems so like bubbly and happy like Monica yeah. was. I thought yeah, the, wasn't I mean, she in the trailer? And she's not in the bubble, but she's like outside of it with um with sword. I thought I thought they showed her in that too. And she's in the trailer at several points. Um, oh right, yeah. But they don't like let us know what her role is. I oh mean, yeah. You can of course yeah. make some imply that she's 
that she's with sword for a, a few reasons mm-hmm. um of course when you look at it she's the only black woman in the entire neighborhood so she's <laughs> sure. so that it's would like make sense. The one guy, and the one guy on the the neighborhood watch was the only black man yeah one, exactly yeah. so it's like which you, you is can very evident that they based that fact off of those actual sitcoms where there were almost no black characters on Dick Van Dyke. And if there was one, right. yeah. and if there was one, they were there because the fact that they were black was part of the story. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so uh, like and... it's, it's almost painful to be reminded of that because it's like, damn, there really was a time when every sitcom on TV was just the whitest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, when I when I saw her, it's almost like you can pick out all the people that don't belong in the neighborhood. Yeah, that's what I that's when I looked at when I like even with with um, Agatha's characters, like well, clearly you're not from this neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Like there's like you can see like the differences in the characters. I feel like yeah, yeah, they're they're doing a good job of that. They made it obvious enough to to the point where you know they don't belong and. Uh... We'll see that develop as it goes on. So I'm looking forward to it. I thought these were these. This was a solid first step in whatever they're going from here. And like I said earlier, I think there's nine episodes. And from what I heard, I think they're like three different parts, three different acts. Where like episodes one, two, and three are going to be similar. Four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. Kind of like Star Wars, but better, arguably. Um, so I can mi- see it being different eras of television well, going in that route. And for every right. episode, I thought it was just maybe the first couple. I didn't know if they were going to do that for every episode. Well, I know there's supposed to be a Brady Bunch one at some point. That was my next question. Yeah. I figured that was next week for the seventies. Yeah, I yeah. I figured there's Brady Bunch. It looks like there's Roseanne in there. Oh, um, yep, yep. Um, but yeah, I figured they're going to go with this different eras thing until they finally like get out of the bubble of what this actually is yeah yeah Yeah, i could see them doing a friends or a seinfeld style parody at some point along the lines well that'd be funny i'm very curious to see what they do with the pregnancy if like if they actually go through with having the kids and if if they go the same route as the comics did that that's ballsy by marvel but dare i ask what it is well, those kids aren't alive anymore. I'll put it that way. Oh no. Hmm. I think they got reincarnated at some point, but even I think they died again. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. that's terrible. I think, yeah, yeah, I think they're re- reincarnated, but that that's why I get the tie to. This really feels like a tie to House of M for me. Yeah. Um, and it it's very telling. Like when we found out the Secret Invasion is going to be a TV show. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I can see them taking a lot of these crossovers like Civil War, War and using them as smaller properties. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're doing that with Star Wars, with, you know, like the Mandalorian's going to tie in with Rangers of the Republic, which is going to tie in with Soka, and they're going to do like a big event thing like they did with the Defenders. So I could sort of see them doing that with the Marvel shows, too. Yeah, and maybe see. Secret Wars will sort of be the thing that brings all these together. What I think is funny, though, is this wasn't even supposed to be the first Marvel TV project we got. We were supposed to get Falcon and Winter Soldier before this. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, you're right. It was, that so was supposed to come curious. out late last year. I'm wondering, like, if they had to change anything about either show, like, if they referenced any events from either show in the other, like, how they would have gotten around that. But I know that they were still filming Falcon and Winter Soldier Maybe they still are, but even until recently, I was seeing like production stills being shared around and stuff. So I don't know. That's going to be weird. But I also think that we might get a cameo from Doctor Strange at the end of this because Wanda is in Doctor Strange too. Yep, that's confirmed. Yeah, right. So I think maybe he's going to show up to maybe help her reign in her magic a little bit, or maybe teach her something about her magic, or maybe she'll be a villain. Who knows? Maybe they'll take this down a completely unexpected route and make her the villain that he's going up against. That, that's what people have speculated, which I think would be very interesting if they went down that route. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think she's going to be like a all the way full-fledged villain, but I could totally see Doctor Strange coming at the end and telling her, like, you have to let this go. You have to come out of this bubble. It's getting out of control. Yeah. Like, I could see it being where he's the only one who can break through and not be affected by it but 
one thing I wish the trailers hadn't even shown was it almost seems like at some point the neighborhood gets attacked and it looks like it's back in modern time and like her and Vision sort of suit up to go take care of business. Oh, yeah. And I sort of yeah, wish see. I, I think that's a red herring. That's my theory. I think it's a red herring. Hmm. Yeah. I, I think that I think the because you, you you see two things. You see the the neighborhood get quote unquote attacked and then you see them standing at the window seeing the neighborhood attacked and they hold hands and say, We have to fight for this. But that goes back to my theory that Wanda knows and she's in control and she's probably looking at it like they I'm not gonna let them take this from me. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good point. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the other part of my theory I wanted to tie back to, though, with the Monica thing is I think Monica is there on behalf of somebody, possibly Sword. Oh, I think but so, I think, too, yeah. I think we're going to end up finding out that her and – because Kat Dennings as Darcy is coming back for this, too. She is, yeah. I think I think her, Darcy, and Randall Park's character are all somehow going to be connected to what is going on outside of the bubble, we'll call it. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how those characters uh, interact at some point. Like I said, I know we hear Jimmy Woo's character at the very end. Um, it's pretty. I mean, his voice is very recognizable, so I I could tell that right off the bat. But yeah, no, it's gonna be interesting. I'm, I'm glad they're not rushing right into it and they're taking their time with it. Um, and I think, like we said earlier, to kind of circle back to what we started off the show with, that I think it was smart to drop two episodes at once, um, especially since they're kind of the same thing. So I thought that was good. But uh. Yeah, no, this has been great, guys. I appreciate the time with you guys uh, taking the time to talk about it. If you are interested in any of the wrestling fans, by the way, I saw this morning, Kalisto interviewed the cast of WandaVision, which sounds incredibly random. Um, but, but I guess <laughs> he talked about Paul... the WWE YouTube channel or yeah, something. It's on their YouTube channel. He, he interviewed Paul Bettany and, uh, uh, God, what's her name? What's uh, Wanda, uh, Wanda's name? Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen, yeah. I'm looking at it right now. It's on their Twitter page. He interviewed him for like eight minutes, which I don't know why, but and I don't know why it was Kalisto of all people, and not like <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess because God, Renee Young is, isn't available anymore. That's why. But that is super random. It's very random. Uh, like it would have made sense if it was The Miz. He yeah. has a talk show on WWE TV for Christ's sake. Like exactly. he's, he's used to talking celebrities hell even kevin owens would have made more sense they could have just put up the ko show sign behind him as he's interviewing them <laughs> yeah that would have been awesome i i mean maybe and maybe i just i, mean, I didn't know this but maybe kalisto is a big marvel fan I'm, I'm just not aware i don't know like i think putting someone like johnny gargano in there would have been cool because he fucking loves this stuff so uh did you guys hear about the marvel luchador thing they're doing marvel luchador thing i don't think so so I, apparently, I've only seen the Funko Pops. I haven't seen any news. So apparently, Marvel, I think they uh, are doing a deal with Triple A, and there's actually going to be four wrestlers that are inspired by Captain America, Iron Man. I think Venom was one of them, and possibly Spider Man was the other. Didn't they do that already at uh, Triple Mania? Was this older? Okay. I think it's a triple mania because I remember the Spider-Man, everybody was like, that's totally Leo Rush. <laughs> um, let me see here. I just tried to pull up a thing about I'm trying to see when this was from. And triple mania was a while ago. So, yeah. wasn't, wasn't it November or something? No, this is something new that they just announced in December. Ah, okay. Then it's some, something Marvel different. They announced a collaboration to expand the sporting and cultural experience of wrestling in Mexico, including plans for brand new stories in the Marvel Universe and a collection of consumer products, of course. Yeah. As part of the collaboration, Marvel and AAA introduced a new group of wrestlers as by Marvel's, Marvel's most iconic superheroes and villains this past weekend. So it looks like a Triple Mania 28? Was that right. back in December? Yes. Okay, so it looks like that is that is what we're talking about then, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. that's, the, that's the show but that um, Spider-Man was on. Something in the comics, too. Like, there's supposed to be a limited-run comic about these Lucha Libre guys. Because they're in Lucha Comics before. That's cool. Interesting. Nice. So, I thought that was kind of funny, just connecting the two worlds. <laughs> 
hey, seeing wrestling and, and Marvel come together, I think is uh, it's pretty sick. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these people, like, I, I could see totally AEW doing business with them at some point. I don't know in what form or fashion, but I think Cody's a big Marvel fan. I know he loves DC stuff, but I'm, I think he's a Marvel fan, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, when I interviewed him, I asked him about that. I didn't, I didn't put it in the article because I was mostly just bullshitting with him. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> what he said. But he was he was a DC fan, and I think when I asked him, because I was like, a lot of people have fan cast you as Nightwing. He's like, I want to play Booster Gold. I was like, oh shit, that's perfect. <laughs> like, <laughs> have you ever seen a drawing of Booster Gold? He kind of looks like Cody Rhodes with the blonde hair. Oh, yeah. that's cool. No, I never seen him. That's awesome. Yeah, that would have that would be a funny. Uh, a funny casting thing because we were talking. Oh, you know what it was? I was asking him what it was like to film the scenes for Arrow. Oh right, he, okay. He was on Arrow as yeah. a character named Derek Sampson, mm-hmm. and so yeah, we were just kind of going back and forth and talking about that. He seemed like he liked Marvel, but he was more into the DC stuff, which I I, I know a lot of people who are like a lot of my friends are way more into Batman than Iron Man even though Marvel has so much more stuff from the past 10 years just yeah. going back to when we were kids Batman 89 you know the DC characters have permeated pop culture for longer than Marvel has mm-hmm. so I get why there's people who prefer one over the other personally I like them both and uh, you know I'm I'm hoping both can maintain success like I'm uh, I'm looking forward to the Snyder Cut. I hope it's better. <laughs> did you hear what Cody said? I don't know if he said this to you, Chris, but did you hear what Cody said about when he came back with the darker hair a couple months ago that it was a Spider-Man-inspired thing? Did I say Spider-Man? I mean, I'm sorry, Superman-inspired thing. Yes, oh. I saw that. I didn't know that. I thought I he saw made... that. He, 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 didn't he compare it to the death of Superman? Yes, comics? that's what he said. Yeah, I, I don't know if that. I, I don't know if he disclosed that to you, Chris, when you interviewed him a couple months ago for the site for Bleacher. But yeah, I guess he said that to somebody, no. which is he, cool. He should have come back with a mullet then. With a mullet? Is that what you said? Yes. Well, yeah. In the comics, Superman comes back with a freaking mullet. Oh God, Cody's had the same <laughs> hairstyle for like fifteen years. So I don't think you would. De- I don't think you would ever come back with anything else but what he has right now, aside from the color. Of yeah. Course. But yeah, I thought it was weird that he went blonde so quick, and I almost wondered. My first thought was, I was like, "Oh, did they make him change it for the Go Big Show?" That's what I thought. Reason? That's what my. That's what I figured. Then he came back with a blonde hair like a week later. I'm like, "What was the point?" Yeah. Like he even acknowledged when he said that, like like Phil said, the death of Superman thing. He was like, "It was so lost in everyone. Like it just it didn't even matter because almost no one caught the reference." So like, well, that's what and I, I mean changing your hair color is not that unusual no and he's so, done it before too yeah why why would anybody have gotten that that was a reference it's not like he was <laughs> wearing it's not like he was wearing red blue and yellow attire and all of a sudden he's wearing black and silver like i don't know how anyone could have picked that reference out yeah exactly <laughs> well, he He's got to realize we're all in the wrestling bubble, and everybody wasn't looking at it as a costume change. Everybody was like, is he a heel? Is he a heel now? Oh, my <laughs> yeah, God, exactly. is he a bad guy? <laughs> yeah. yeah I why was anybody speculating that? Like, all of a sudden he changes his hair color, so he's supposed to be a heel? It's like... Well, it, the, back in the day when people used to grow up beards, that that's when you know they would turn heel. Like, the whole facial hair thing was... a Like, I don't, not recently, but like five, ten years ago, if someone came back with a beard, whether it was Batista or this guy or that guy... They would almost always turn heel, so I think that's why. Because otherwise, why else would he come back with different hair? I mean, that just reminds me of the the mirror universe in Star Trek, when like the evil <laughs> versions of them all have goatees. <laughs> that's yes, funny. yes. <laughs> it's just so random. Yeah, that's that's WWE for you. But um, yeah, we'll wrap it up on that note, guys. This was great. Um, Phil, if you want to join us next week, we'll talk episode three because we really enjoyed having you on. This has been uh, really cool. So. Uh, yeah, any final thoughts? I'll start with you, Phil, before we ride off into the sunset here. Well, I'll tell you, getting up this morning and seeing the Marvel logo made <laughs> me realize how much I miss going to movie theaters. Yep. And it was a good treat to start the day off with. Yeah. Not only seeing the logo, but hearing the song to the opening Marvel music gave me chills. It was cool. First time in a long time. I mean, obviously, I feel like it's it's ingrained in my mind after Chris and I rewatched all the movies last year. Um, but other than that, though, in terms of new content, it was it was awesome to say. Uh, what about you, Chris? Oh yeah, I I didn't stay up like I did, 
you know, on New Year's and watch Cobra Kai, but <laughs> I have I have weird sleeping habits. So I was up at like five thirty in the morning and I, I remembered like almost immediately I'm like oh yeah WandaVision's on I'm gonna watch it before anything gets spoiled for me on Twitter because I knew that's what was gonna happen definitely definitely yeah you, you literally can't wait to watch anything and expect social media to respect spoilers anymore it's just not a thing no exactly so, yeah but yeah yeah <laughs> Like, seriously, seeing that logo again, Phil, same thing. I was just like, oh, it's it's been so long. It's like seeing a, an old friend for the first time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy we have new Marvel content again, and I'm happy that it's something that feels 100% different from everything else in Marvel so far. And that's something we talked about a little on the podcast, is, like, despite the movies all having different directors – and different actors and different writers, there is a little bit of sameness to the Marvel movies. And that's Mm -hmm. to be expected. They're all supposed to take place in the same world. Why would they look different? But taking such a drastically different approach for this TV show, like I I almost think it, it worked out in their benefit that this is what's launching phase four, essentially, because it's sort of telling people like, hey, Marvel's not going to always be the exact same thing every time anymore. Yeah. So if you didn't like what we were doing before, maybe you'll like what we're doing now. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, I think above all else, it's something different. Cause like you said, I listen, I love all the movies, but this show is so different, whether you like it or not. I mean, obviously we all enjoyed it, but like for those that may not have liked it, it at least it's something different from what they've done up to this point. And I think this, I, I really love the idea of them doing shows. Cause I don't know if this would work as a movie. I think as a show and like a nine episode limited series. That's what you said, Chris, before we got started here, that you think this is going to be a one season show, maybe lead into something and that's it, right? Yeah, I think Falcon and Winter Soldier is going to be more than one season. Okay. But I, I think this is designed to be a one season story. And, it, it you know, if they do a second season of anything related to Wanda and Vision, it's not going to have this this format so it's going to feel completely different it'll be completely different so this is almost sort of just a movie being told in separate chapters which i'm down for because it it gives them so much leeway having that much more time than they would have with a two hour and 20 minute movie Mm -hmm. to dig into the little details and spend some time with these characters that we normally wouldn't get to know very well Oh, absolutely. No, I think the, the amount of freedom that this stuff has, uh, the shows going forward, is going to be cool, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, this, is, I think, is going to be a great example. And th- like you said, the, the cool thing about it was that this was never supposed to be the first part of Phase 4. It's really weird that our first glimpse into Phase 4 is WandaVision, because we all expected it to either be Falcon and Winter Soldier or Black Widow, and then it was WandaVision. But I think it's going to set the tone for how crazy things are about to fucking get with this with, with Marvel. Between this stuff, you know, we mentioned the Spider-Man stuff. That's going to be wild when that comes out in about a year or two. Um, just everything being rumored, secret invasion, like Phil said earlier. There, there's so much to look forward to. And I know it's a lot of content, but so far Marvel has not proven us wrong. They have not steered us wrong. So uh, I'm oh. looking forward to seeing what they're doing. And I think uh, so far so good with WandaVision. And I think, I know we're only two episodes in, but I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing uh, what they're going to be doing so, going forward. What you say, Chris? One last thing I gotta ask is, do you think they will have Elizabeth Olsen do any kind of Full House reference, just due to the fact that her sisters? I think it'd be a missed opportunity if they didn't. They they, they have think, to, right? I think there's no way they don't. Yeah. My immediate question that I didn't ask, and I've been kind of sitting and thinking about this the whole time. Mm-hmm. Do you guys think Vision is back alive? Because I'm of the belief that he's still dead, and this is all an illusion. I completely agree i think it's gonna end with first of all yeah i completely agree he's not alive and i think this whole thing is gonna end with she has to come to terms with his death and not not kill him herself or whatever but she has to she has to leave him in the past and she has to move on from that and accept his death all over again so i don't think it should lead to him coming back but i think if they're gonna bring him back in any form this is completely perfect so yeah that, those are my thoughts on that yeah i i kind of agree i think that the end of the show is going to be her coming to terms with his death, but I won't be mad if they do decide 
to keep Paul Bettany around. But I, I do I do think that it's probably going to end with her like having a proper goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. So there's a lot of different ways that this otherwise show can go. she otherwise she just created a second soul stone out of thin air. <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. They they have to Well, I think so. it was Well, he has the soul stone. I think I'm, I I thought there was a point in the trailers where like he doesn't have it in his head, but I think he has it the entire time. So, I well, they got to move on from the infinity stone stuff, I think. Man, but so that just goes back to there's so many Easter eggs that they put in this thing. And I don't want to go back into a long discussion, but I noticed right away that Vision's powers are a little bit different. And I was like, huh. It, it just just notice things like him not wanting, like the, the, the beginning of the second episode and him not wanting to go outside to see what the threat is and not actually wanting to put up a fight. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, hmm. That yeah, to I, me was was I, I almost thought that was more of a reference to Dick Van Dyke probably being a coward. <laughs> I mean it, it is, but it's just certain things like him coming in and just the way his powers and his anatomy works now is different. Yeah, yeah no. like the gun they, yeah, they the show him, weird. Like, literally three little cogs getting jammed up by gum, like that felt like it was done for comedic purposes, but at the same time, the real vision probably wouldn't act like he was drunk from eating gum. So that just reinforces that it's her hallucination or her creation, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely made it the point. To, that was the big part of the second episode. And then at the very beginning of the first episode, they made it the point to reference that he doesn't eat anything. And then when they were talking about, oh, what do you want for breakfast? And he's like, I don't eat anything. And that's why the fridge is empty. So it's like, if he doesn't eat anything, and clearly he's not human, then how can he reproduce and have a baby? Like, obviously, this is all like you said, Phil, um, all in Wanda's head. So I, I, I'm, I think the, the possibilities here are endless. God damn, I know we keep saying that we're going to end this, but I have a question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, when they're at the uh, Neighborhood Watch meeting, yep. he goes out of nowhere. He's like, I forget the guy's name, but he's like, so-and-so's a communist. And then they all start laughing. Oh, yeah, the guy with the mustache, right? Isn't that what he said or no? Yeah, like it didn't seem like Vision was doing that to make a joke. No, oh, yeah. So I think, yeah. Is, is communist code for like that guy's a hydra plant and he's not supposed to be here and he's here for strucker <laughs> yeah i i got the same read from that that he wasn't joking because everything else he did in that he did not uh, seem to understand humor and he was trying to like make jokes based off of their jokes and so i got the same inclination like there's something with that guy that he was trying to get him out of the picture for some reason and he's also been in both episodes, which we can't say the same for all of the background characters, but he seems so minor now. It feels like they're intentionally keeping him as a minor character, so there is some reveal about him later. Yeah, no, I agree with that. That whole scene, it was it was a funny line. It just came completely out of nowhere, because they were just like... I forgot exactly what they were talking about. They were like jokingly, just kind of going back and forth, just like with harmless stuff. And then... Then Vision was like, oh, you're a communist. It was just, like, so random. Like, it just escalated very quickly. And I don't think they would do that without purpose. Every, everything they do is for a reason. But I think the Strucker uh, connection is, is pretty spot on if I had to take a guess myself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's clearly a time period joke, too, because having a, a neighborhood watch thing, and the big scare at the time was, of course, communism. Uh, yeah, that's so. true. That's true, yeah. Yeah, it feels like they're perfectly tying in all these things that seem like they're references to shows from the time, but they also actually mean something to the show now. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to pick out which ones are which. Like, like Vision cowering in bed, is that just a joke because Dick Van Dyke would have done the same thing? Or, or is that a reference to the fact that he's not this all-powerful being because he's just her hallucination? Like, yeah. There's so many different ways you could read all these scenes so far, but that's kind of why I'm loving it because it's like it's a mystery right now. Yeah, it's hard to read, and it feels like it's one of the few, 
And Marvel does a good job of keeping surprises, but I, I feel like there are plenty more surprises to come with this show that we just have absolutely no idea what's about to come. Like, with some of the Spider-Man stuff, we we heard about all those cast announcements, which is obviously hard to keep under wraps, but we're hearing about that now, and the movie doesn't come out for another year and a half. Like, I feel like there's stuff to come on WandaVision that we have no idea. Like, like for example, we talked about the brother earlier. We don't know if that's confirmed or not. That's just purely speculation. I don't think there's been anything confirmed that he's going to be in the show. But if he pops up, that's a genuine surprise. So there's there's a lot of different ways they can go with this, which is cool. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm I'm really looking forward to everything. Yeah, me too. I, I think so far, again, like I said, we're only two episodes in, but uh, so far so good. Looking forward to breaking down with you guys. Uh, hopefully next week, Phil, if you want to join us, Chris and I do this all the time. So if you want to join us, feel free. Um, this has been fun. So, uh, yeah, you could follow Chris, obviously the doc on the Twitter machine at BR underscore doctor, myself, a wrestle rant and Phil at Phil DL six one six, right? That's your Phil. That, that's your Twitter handle, Phil. Yes. Perfect. And obviously that's a reference to Marvel world six one six, right? Yes. Yeah. We talked about that last time. Very cool stuff. But, uh, yeah, this has been great guys. Thanks so much for the time. And, uh, hopefully we can do this again soon. Yeah. Thank you. Yep.